Well, it's time for fall cleaning in the garden. And so I'm thinning out everything and I've got a few things still growing in the raised bed garden. But now it's time to concentrate my efforts in the greenhouse. Some broccoli and some cauliflower, but they're not coming up very well. So I don't know what's going on. But my lettuce and cabbage are doing gangbusters. I have one tomato plant here. I didn't want to do a lot, but these are micro miniature little cherry tomatoes that grow like grapes. So I'll probably put that one in this corner and trellis it all the way around. My concern was trying to uh, heat this in the winter because I have no power out here and I've done some research on YouTube and I think that what I'm going to do is put some tanks underneath here, some black fuel tanks that I have been trying to figure out what to do with and use them to solar heat this area and they'll retain the heat and give it off at night so I'm gonna give that a try and we'll see and I also have my daughter Jessica helping me she has come out here from Las Vegas to help daddy work on the projects that are still like looming over me all the time so all right here we go the tanks are in place, and they're actually warm. I touched them, they're pretty warm. I mean, this is not going to be a scientific test here, but I think they're really going to help with the wet winter coming and the weather changing. I've got that tube right there is leaking, uh, where I made the mistake of drilling a hole in the joint. I'm going to pull all that hole that whole section out and I'm gonna replace it but I'm gonna use the old pipe in here well here it is fall 2014 actually I think winter is here I've been inundated with leaves we had a hard freeze I'm in northern Alabama some of my little plants that I planted for the winter um, not doing so good. Got a new thermometer that I can read in the house. Um, it was 42 degrees here last night. I think they were just lacking a little water because uh, those little, as opposed to these guys that actually hold a lot more moisture, these guys you got to be really on it. And uh, the greenhouse has become really a catch-all, but I'm super excited to get on this. And within the next couple days, I'm hoping to do that. We got ice so it did warm up a little bit today but last year I tried to save my trees um, when they started blossoming in the spring we got a freeze so I set up this light run and until I get my hybrid rain gutter grow system in the greenhouse I'm going to attempt to keep my little seedlings alive and uh, I'm monitoring the temperature in here as well. So what I'm doing is stringing my lights up inside here and putting these little seedlings in boxes. Well, here it is Thanksgiving and I've got my plants covered. I sure hope they make it another couple days till I get my pipe hooked up. Well, as usual, I'm getting on my project two days before I'm leaving the country again, but I will only be gone for a short period of time. It was very cold last night. You can see, I just plug these holes. The water inside looks a little frozen, so hopefully the sun will melt it. I'm getting ready to pop the end off of this and drain it. Here's a few lessons learned, okay? I put the net cups in and uh, basically didn't protect them. Just, you know, filled them with peat moss, packed them in there, and that worked really well. As a matter of fact, the four net I mean uh, bags that I pulled out you can see they've grown some moss on them I don't exactly know how I'm gonna deal with that yet the soil is still soaked I mean it's moist it's beautiful I'm gonna add a little uh, a little more gypsum salt and uh, a little fertilizer in there and rebag them um, but another lesson learned is I need to protect those net cups with a sock or something 
um, to keep the peat moss from dropping in inside the tubes. It's pretty thick in there in some places. So, And apparently the celery root grew right through the net cup, right through the bag, apparently. And um, you can see just how much goop, how much mud collected in here. Look at this. I don't know if you can see that. It's really deep with mud. Probably have an inch, an inch of mud in there at least. What I've decided to do here is cut some old t-shirts up and use the uh, material to line the net cup to eliminate any debris falling in. This is uh, one of my old standbys, a Robosaurus shirt, probably performed in many live shows in that shirt, who knows, looks well worn though. If you're not familiar with Robosaurus, I used to drive it, I helped build it, and um, you can see some video clips of it in my intro video on my channel, so if you click go to my channel and, and you'll see that big question mark you can click on that video and it'll show you show you what the heck Robosaurus is all about anyway I'm gonna get to cutting I'll probably save the logo but I'll cut the rest of it well I've just cut the pipe with the trusty old sawzall and now I'm getting ready to lift it out and try and get it to drain that away never seems to end the cover charge for walking into a Lowe's or Home Depot. <laughs> well, here it is one day before I depart, and um, I'm just barely getting started here. This is kind of one of those deals, but uh, what I'm doing, I'm cutting a hole in the bench, and I'm going to put this guy on, on the end with a uh, valve on it so I can drain the system through the floor. Yep, and then I'll put this one on the receiving end with a cap on it. This will be, it's going to be a horseshoe. So it's going to go out and about like this and then two 90s pointed together and loop back. So it's going to be a complete loop system. This will be here so I can uh, so I can go ahead and wash it out if I want to. Um, I'll just cap this end. I couldn't find a 90 with a threaded end so this will have to do. Um, and I'll also be pumping water from one to the other. This is where the heater will go on this side and uh, and I'll pump it over with a small pump that I bought, a little 12 volter. Anyway, uh, you'll see it when it's complete or at the next stage. But this is, I'm way behind the gun here so I need to get cracking. Okay, here's my drain and uh, this is going to start out the stability for the system. So it's kind of locked in. See if I can't feed it through here. There we go. And okay. There it is. That's the first piece in the puzzle. I've got to be able to turn it off here so the system doesn't drain out. But if I ever want to drain it, there it is. Okay. I've rough cut it with the saws all these pieces and um, and then I'm finishing it off with the with the uh, chop saw. Well, I broke into the new pipe and I'll have to drill some holes. And I can get one extra plant on a run if I line them up. In other words, if I put one there and one here. But I think I'm going to alternate and they'll be able to get a little more sun that way, I'm hoping. So I lose a plant but I gain sun and if this works out uh, maybe I'll expand this and do a double decker later or something. Well I'm getting a little closer I have my plumbing hooked up I've moved my hose bib out here and uh, what I have here is a aquarium heater to keep the water warm and over here is my float, float valve and now I'm just framing up the sides to hold the buckets. Uh, two by four isn't quite enough and I'm putting some furring strips on it and that'll help hold it together. I don't really have a time to do a super duper job, but uh, this will get me through. This is a pretty high volume 
constant uh, running water pump and so I'll be sucking from down in this tube a little bit that's my drainage tube but it'll fill up with water so I'll be sucking out of there and pumping it in right on top of the water heater so it's going to uh, it's going to pump this way and it's going to make its way all the way around and back over here and boom so we'll see how that works I don't know I've got a space heater in case it doesn't okay everything's furred out it's time to do the big water test here see if she holds water it's been a few hours since I glued the PVC turn this guy off I have this thing kind of winterized all right here she goes She's filling up. Well, my little pump, what a piece of junk that is, a little Chinese piece of crap. Um, it quit. It wouldn't, it didn't have enough to suck head pressure up like inches. I, I, so this whole scheme isn't going to work without a water pump. Well, it's about 8 o'clock at night. Um, there's my plants that I'm going to plant tomorrow. I just ran up to the aquarium store and got this uh, little submersible aquarium pump for $21.59 and they're available online for like 9 bucks. But anyway, that is warm water right there. And this is the other end of the probably 30 feet of tubing and that is cold water pick up water up to two feet so I'm not worried about this one and it's only about I think eight watts so it won't be a big drain on the solar system when I get that hooked up when I get back so before I bury it I wanted to show it off and just show you it's just a little submersible pump well I couldn't help myself I lined one of the net cups with a t-shirt piece and filled it with peat moss and then planted the tomato plant because man this little guy isn't looking so good and I want to give it the best chance possible so it's the first one going in and we'll see how that does uh, I'll get at this tomorrow but uh, I just wanted to do something tonight I've decided to turn everything off and uh, open up the valve, the dump valve, and drain it out. I'm seeing a lot of debris floating in here from the cutting and sawing and drilling and stuff, so I'm gonna give it a good flush. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of uh, PVC traveling through here. So it'll, it'll do it good. Get some fresh water in there. Well, I've really raped my raised bed garden for the soil and the buckets and you know so I'll I'll be making more I'm sure but I'll probably wait until my fiance gets here Sani from Thailand should only be another couple weeks this project with aside from cleanup is done I have a couple of them that don't look like they're gonna make it I'll be gone six days so I've kind of maybe going to keep those alive, I don't know. But they're just extras. 31 buckets, 32 buckets, something like that. And so it's completed. And that's the end of this project. So thanks for watching. I'll probably do an update when I get back just to uh, see how they did in five or six days. But that's it. Uh, subscribe, like, push that like button. And thanks for watching, and can't wait to see you on the next one. Bye. Well, this is a week after my trip. Uh, well, I was I left my garden a week ago, and this is what it looks like uh, after being completely unattended for a week. And the water is warm, the pump is still going, 
and it all looks pretty good. The, the soil is absolutely moist. It's doing its job. Um, everything looks happy. The tomatoes growing fine. Uh, the only thing is the two plants that I suspected were going to die, died. So, well, maybe this guy's still got a chance. It's still, it's not crispy. I'm going to let that go for a little bit. This one, this one's crispy. So, I've got my spares down here, which are, by the way, still actually growing. And what is this? This doesn't look like lettuce, but perhaps it is. Yeah, that's lettuce. Okay. Well, lettuce or cabbage? I think I'll, I think I'll do the cabbage. I don't know. I got a lot of cabbage plants. I'll count them up and even it out if I can. And that's about it. So thanks a lot for watching. And uh, I guess my next video will be the harvest. All right. Take care.